Thank you very much, uh, Cahirlac, and welcome to the guests. Uh, good to have you in again. Um, but obviously, our discussion is far more crucial now, uh, given the time frame we're in. And Ireland, like most of Europe, is obviously facing a very difficult winter, as been said earlier. Energy prices, particularly natural gas, are a multiple of previous years. Many of us in the Dáil and the Ministry were aware of this. We've warned about this situation arising, and it's a pity not more quick fixes were initiated, uh, particularly for households in the, as we face the winter, um, particularly around the small scale retrofitting. And I note the Minister's statement there about the figures having doubled on 2021, particularly for those on low incomes. Uh, however, if you look at my own area in Dunleary Rath Down, just 80 out of the 4,500 council owned homes uh, have been retrofitted. Uh, the window and door replacement programme is on hold until 2023. And yet, while progress has been made in terms of active travel, money has gone back Back to the exchequer um, in, in that county. And that's just uh, an example of that area um, as opposed to others. Uh, the Belgian Prime Minister said that this we could be facing this crisis for five to ten years. I hope he's wrong. However, we need to obviously support retrofitting uh, urgently over the next uh, over the next couple of months. Businesses and host households, Minister, are facing enormous costs uh, and increases in prices, and that's why obviously there's a lot of emphasis placed on Budget 2023, and we need to see uh, greater increases and in supports for those for fuel allowance and obviously the continuation of reductions in VAT and duty. Um, just in terms of additional consumer protections, whilst the existing ones are welcome, I have serious concerns in relation to what was been approved by the CRU. For example, people are being told that they should reduce their peak time usage. Um, and that's understandable given what we've been discussing. Suppliers like SSEA, SSE Airtricity plan to increase their peak their off-peak rates by 60 and eye-watering 62 percent um, and yet uh, Miss Machiavelli was saying in her uh, statement which I find there's an anomaly in it on one point you say an accelerated decline in the availability of the current generation fleet and yet you go on to say the retention in the service of older generations I mean you know which is it is it that it's crumbling and it can't be used or is it going to be saved and can continue to be used um, but just if I can uh, finish then Minister in relation to the absence of the smart meters and day and night meters in most households. Um, the issue of the peak and off peak is real problematic. Most of the consumers are on 24 hour gas or electricity meters and it might be worthwhile considering a standard monthly allowance or a tariff pr price at a reasonable rate uh, and give people the opportunity of a basic supply with graduated tariffs beyond that. Um, and if I can just ask my questions then, just in terms of, I have three questions for the Minister, I have two questions for CRU and two for um, Air grid. Uh, Minister, what is the Irish gas storage capacity at present? Uh, and also, in the event of what we heard from um, the air grid, in the event of the gas rationing in the UK in the coming winter, if that does become a problem, a problem considering exports through the Moffat pipeline to Ireland are likely to be rationed as a result of that, what emergency measures do we have here uh, to mitigate any gas shortages? And also, today's Irish independent, there is the issue about the Carob gas field, uh, may possibly continuing to 2036, looking at renewable options. Uh, and Minister, have you met with the Indigenous industry um, since coming into office? And then finally, then in terms of questions for the CRU and Airgrid, um, going from Airgrid's statement, um, the annual generation capacity statement, you said that's coming in the next couple of weeks. But you also highlighted that since 2017, Airgrid has identified via that statement increased tightness between supply and demand and of adequate definitely. generation capacity challenges. I'm just wondering how that fell on deaf ears for so long. Um, and I'll come back in the second round. Then. Thank Thanks. You. You've used up your quota for the second round as well, Deputy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the first question was to the Minister. Minister, yep. Yes, I have met all, every industry involved in the energy and, and environmental area. Um, with regard to the UK and, and gas security, maybe I might just refer, there was a, a statement from the UK government spokesman earlier, earlier in August 
where they said the UK has no issues with either gas or electricity supply and the UK government is fully prepared for any scenario, even those that are extreme and very unlikely to occur. We have long established cooperation mechanisms with Ireland that would ensure gas supply to Ireland in the event of any emergency. Now, we cannot rule anything out and the CEPA report, which will be published within the coming weeks, will look at every aspect of this and, and make sure that we do have provisions in terms of uh, for every eventuality and that will set out. Can I make just one additional very brief point? I think your point about the role of local authorities is absolutely correct. I think what we need is everyone in this country now to really focus on energy efficiency in everything we do. Our reduce your use campaign is going to be ramped up and really has to be it's the best protection against high prices. You're right, our local authorities have not delivered quickly enough the scale of retrofitting that we need and want and haven't been spending the budgets in both that and other areas like the act of travel that would deliver efficiency and protect our people in this time. We have to all collectively now work together, particularly from the most vulnerable households, the ones that are in weak, are in lower incomes and in inefficient homes. They have, we have to raise a sharp focus on those people and protect them through this next two to three year period. Great. CRUs. Uh, just in terms of consumer protections and smart tariffs, so, um, well, just on the smart meter rollout, we have about um, 920,000 metres uh, installed as of now. We'll have 1.1 million by the end of this year, which is the latest update from ESB Networks. So that will be uh, over 50% of households with more than ramping out next year. And what we really want to do is optimise the use of those metres now to support customers with better information and better tariff options that might help them understand the challenge of the increasing uh, cost overall and to the extent possible save money on that. So as the Minister has clearly outlined, all prices are going up for all customers at a level that we have not seen before and that, that is of significant concern for all of us. What we're doing with the network tariffs is trying to ensure that there's an incentive so while the, the peak might go up and this is relatively speaking and on the basis that all tariffs are going up but there would be relatively uh, a better incentive to move uh, energy off peak. So we're doing that through the network tariffs and we will be challenging suppliers um, around how they're then uh, providing uh, you know, attractive tariffs to customers that help them understand how they can save money. Um, in terms of the um, that, that differential between we have we have poorer availability of the existing fleet. So um, in some cases that, that has not just been the older plant, although they are challenged and they are older, but in some cases that's been some of our, our newer gas fire generators. And we think part of this is uh, because we are at a point where with the level of renewable penetration that we have, uh, some of those plants, instead of running consistently and in a manner that they can predict, are actually running uh, dependent on the wind, so with less predictability, which sometimes gives rise to, to challenges around their maintenance and so on. Uh, we, we think that's part of the issue, but that is something that we're, we're working on and, and monitoring. Um, but within that, uh, we do think it is worth retaining some of the older plant and while, and that is part of our programme of actions and that work is underway. And given that they are older and, and tend to be more carbon emitting, uh, they, would, they would effectively be there as backup rather than something we'd expect to see consistently on. used on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's really, it's all about, you know, enhancing uh, the options that we have available. Uh, as Radney said, it's when there's wind, wind isn't blowing, when interconnectors aren't blowing, what do we have that we can support security of supply? Okay. So, so that's where we're coming on to. Uh, Jim, was there anything I missed there? The gas, the no. gas storage. Sorry. The was the gas storage question to us? Uh, we don't have gas storage at the present time, but that is going to be looked at within the SEPA study. Okay. And then to AirGrid. Sorry, there was two questions there for AirGrid. You asked about uh, Liam might handle the GCS, yes. the yep. GCS question. Yeah. Yeah. Just in relation to GCS, on an annual basis, as you know, we, we do update the GCS based on updated policies and uh, new regulations that actually come in. And we actually, every year, we do produce that and we do engage with all the, the various different stakeholders to make sure everybody understands what's what's involved in it. I think one of the key items is that the GCS clearly called out the issues and I think one of the key issues that we're now facing is that the, the generator that was due to connect or generators that were due to connect didn't materialise. 
and that hence the, we have the issues that we're actually seeing now at the moment uh, materialising and the GCS in the f is predicting out for the next 10 years so we need to take actions now that secures us for those next 10 years as well so it's keen what we take now does secure us for the next 10 years as well. Okay and then, and then finally then there's that 300 megawatt of emergency um, generation you're going to ask yeah, what happened? I mean, just, and I, there's been, seems to be some confusion about this. We identified the need last year. We got support from CRU and government. We got the directions. We went about a selective tendering process, and we picked actors who we believed had the capability to do this with great urgency, I stress, with serious urgency. Unfortunately, one actor who wasn't on that group decided to take legal action and injunct the proceeding. That actor in question didn't have the capacity to provide the solution, but they chose to go to the courts in a way that was very unhelpful from a, a national perspective. We had two choices, trash it out in court and continue, or, you, you know, step back and rerun the process in a, shall I say, a, a more traditional procurement mode. We made that decision because that would create greater certainty about ultimately getting those on the bars. We did not decide not to do it, as some press reports have said, and we've been pushing this as hard as humanly possible. And thankfully, we've one contract signed and another to go, and we will have it on the bars next year. You live and you learn, but um, it was unfortunate one actor put this banner in the works. Can you name the actor? No, I would rather not do that, if you wouldn't mind. So you have privilege <laughs> here. To, no, but I, look, I think it's a matter of <laughs> okay. public record, but I think it's, okay. it's not helpful if I start pointing thank fingers. You. But it is a matter of public record. Exclude them the next Thank time. you. Thank you, Sandra. <laughs>